Anderson Cooper 360, weeknights at 8 and 10 on CNN. What, what did you think of, of them describing George Zimmerman as murder? I think they um, denigrate the jury's decision. They denigrate the whole process of having a jury trial. How dare they not accept a jury verdict? They can be upset if they want to be, but they put on their best case better than they should have the way they tried the case, and the jury still said innocent, still said self-defense. They should accept it like adults and with some sense of grace. Don, one of the things you were vocal about during the trial was what you felt were uh, misstatements or lies or, and, and evidence that the prosecution had held back from you. How difficult was it to try this case? extraordinarily challenging because of just that. It took us probably hundreds of hours to get what we should have gotten by a simple request. So we spent so much time, so much resources, limited resources, trying to get what was obvious uh, that we've asked for repeatedly, continually withheld until we caught them over and over and over again. Some of the analysts I've talked to said, well, they're used to dealing with public defenders who, you know, not experienced guys like you who are going to call them on this, and, and sort of public defenders are kind of overworked and, and unsung heroes of the process, um, and they're used to kind of dealing with them in that way. Do you think that's, that's true? I guess maybe in their fiefdom they have a better opportunity to get away with that type of behavior, um, but, and maybe they have stronger cases. They had a very weak case that was based, I think the prosecution was based less on the facts of the case and the political pressures that were placed upon them and their reaction to it. You have so, no doubt that politics were at play in this case coming to well, when trial. Well, when the Sanford Police Department doesn't decide to file charges and moves it over to the state attorney's office, who was competent to make that decision, who then gets ready to give it to a grand jury, mm -hmm. and Ms. Corey comes into town, disbands the grand jury, and, and files a charge, which, as it turns out, she cannot prove, as the jury tells us, then yes, I think some external pressure like politics has something to do with it. Uh, you, we're hearing this exclusive interview that we just did with, uh, with the jurors. She's the first juror to speak. She says that when they first went into that jury room, um, there were three who wanted not guilty, there were two who wanted manslaughter, and there was one juror who wanted second degree murder. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they all finally came to the not guilty decision. She says race did not play a role, and none of the jurors believe that race played a role in, in this trial. That's something you believed all along. Absolutely. I kept saying that it had nothing to do with race and that race was put on top of this case by certain people who wanted it to be a racial event and who actually created the racial intones of this case, but it just wasn't appropriate. And I'm so happy that the jury was able to see through that or at least ignore it and look at the law, the facts, and apply them properly. One thing you also this juror said was very important to her was the testimony of Chris Serena, the lead investigator, who um, you guys really did a, a masterful job of, of, of talking to on, on the witness stand. Um, some of the analysts, Jeff Tubin, said he had never seen a police officer give such favorable testimony to a defense witness. I think that Chris Arena was frustrated that he was put in a position where he didn't believe that there was probable cause to move forward with this case. And the supervisors, again, because of the political and social pressures on Sanford Police Department, demanded that it be forwarded over to the state attorney's office with a suggestion for a charge. After nine uh, edits of his report, it was forwarded over to the state. Then they were going to look at it and present it to the grand jury. So I think that Chris Arena was looking at this case and saying, it's not a crime. Why are we moving this thing forward? The, um at the end, um, you know, in the last couple of days, there have been demonstrations across the country, and, and people say that this is uh, yet another example of um, the justice system not dealing with African-American males um, legitimately in the same way that deals with Caucasian males. You actually work a lot on, on this issue. You just feel, uh, you, you believe there are inequities in the system, you just don't believe this is a case where this applies. Well, Don and I, for the entirety of our career, have worked defending defendants in criminal cases, and a large percentage of those are black, young black males. So we know how the system treats blacks in the system, and we know how there are some inequities. So we know it better than most people. It's just that in this particular case, it's not one of those. It's not a racial event, and it's not a case that suggests that Trayvon Martin was treated any differently than he should have been treated because of the color of his skin. What happened that night was that there were two people who misinterpreted each other's actions. It looks as though the evidence supports conclusively that Trayvon Martin reacted to that misunderstanding with violence, because George was violently attacked, and he was the only one violently attacked but for the gunshot. So that was a misunderstanding that had tragic consequences, but it doesn't make it a racial event.